everybody, yeah. welcome back to the Malbash Media Show. Today we have an exciting guest, Elizabeth Rice, who's the CEO of her own media company, and she's an interior designer, and she also is a drone operator, which is really exciting. We get to learn a lot from her today. Um, she's very talented, has a really amazing portfolio. You can find her um, on, we'll pop up her website here so you guys can go and see her. But Elizabeth, we're really excited that you are here today. Thank you so much for making the time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Elizabeth is in Los Angeles, and um, we just appreciate it. I know she's super busy, so we're really thankful that she was able to be here today. And we're going to just ask her some questions of how she got started in the business, you know, and what kind of was that inspirational force. So tell us a little bit about what you do, Elizabeth, and then we'll ask some other questions all on the way. Okay. Um, so I own Rev House Media, which is a real estate media production company. Um, we do photo, video, drone, and virtual tours, along with a handful of other like digital services for our clients in real estate, interior design, and like development. Um, so you were saying like, how do I get into, how did I start? Yeah. How did you, how did you get started? Like what made you decide that you wanted to start your own company? Um, so starting my own company was after I got into photography. First I started photography as like a hobby. And then I realized like most photographers I knew were doing freelance. Um, I was lucky enough to be brought on by another real estate photographer who trained me and taught me like everything that I know. Um, and I realized that I kind of wanted to lean more the interior design route when I initially started um, because I wanted to do a little bit more like artistic and uh, like the vignettes and the F1.8. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I was just lucky enough to have a handful of people around me who were their own business owners and entrepreneurship kind of was just a topic that they would bring up so often that I eventually realized I'm like, oh, I feel like this is actually the direction that I want to go in. And I would like to be the owner of my own business. So that was in August of 2019 uh, when it, it started actually going that direction. And of course, COVID, but we're like picking up steam finally again, which is awesome. <laughs> That's rough to start a business, especially right in your COVID time. But you guys have, I mean, you've done well. So, and your portfolio is super impressive and you've got some really great work. You've got like a natural eye. So I think that's absolutely amazing. And starting your own company, it's rough. You know, there's a lot that goes into that, especially in the media world. So, yeah, you, uh, there's so many like steps along the way that you have no idea that you're going to encounter. You're like, oh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Right. And then you're like, oh my God, do I have any idea what I'm doing? <laughs> Yeah, it feels like that a lot of times. You're just like, oh, I've got this. And then you're like, hmm, I don't know. Do I have this? Like, what is <laughs> what is yeah. that? But you're doing great. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, what? So we had talked prior to this and everything. And I know that you, you know wanted to get into design and everything. What was, was there an inspiring force that kind of, you know, pushed it over towards this is exactly what I want to do? Like, what was that moment where you realized that this is what you wanted to do? So I think it was um, when we were shooting, it was mostly like at my previous company, we were shooting mostly real estate and it was like a high volume uh, activity. But then I kind of started realizing when I think I worked with, uh, it was this one interior designer, she was a home stager. I did a couple shoots for her and realized that it was like, I'd started losing track of time. I would go in and just like get into flow state and I think the importance of being around beautiful design is something that like people don't really talk about a lot unless they're in mm -hmm. that space. Like you don't yeah. notice that you're noticing it, you know, yeah. you just know that you feel at ease or you feel happy or you feel just, yeah, like at peace or something. Mm -hmm. So I liked that work environment so much that I wanted to make it more of my day to day. Um, and so that's when we kind of started targeting a little more like luxury real estate clients and like newer developments or even like small cottage houses that were staged and had kind of like um, just unique little quirky things about them, like the trim in the house, the details of like the crown molding or something. 
I feel like I just like staring at stuff. Very visual, right? <laughs> well, I love what um, when you talk about it, you light up so much. So it's really, you could tell it's something that's really passionate for you. So you really like, mm -hmm. when you talk about your style and like what things you look for and stuff. Now, is there a specific style that you enjoy over other styles? I mean, I know it's kind of a hard question, but. Um, I mean, I think everybody's got like their preferences, right? I think there's so many different ways that you can make a space look beautiful, but I feel like I lean towards kind of like modern minimalism, like just new, crisp, clean lines, a lot of like white, <laughs> like white walls for some reason are my just absolute favorite thing. But then watching interior designers just get creative with it and add their color and textures and just like actually observing how they design the house. It makes me be like, oh, maybe I should like do my own house like that. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So I, I wouldn't say like anyone in specific, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, that's, that's really awesome. And I think when you have so many ideas and you can see, you know, where they can a lot of times mesh, it's hard to create just one genre that you really like, you know, because so many of them can connect really well. So what mm -hmm. caused, you know, the drone side of everything? How did you get started with that exactly? So drone is actually um, in the real estate and then development. So more like commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. It's super helpful because if you say are looking at some like 10 story building, you want to be able to get a view of the whole thing. Or if you have a house in like a really cute neighborhood um, and you want to show off like local amenities like schools, parks, um, that's kind of like a standard in real estate photography. And then getting to throw like the drone footage into a video, it just, it adds like a whole extra angle that you're like, oh my God, like that looks like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's really a nice professional touch to have that. And I was talking to you earlier. To me, I wouldn't be able to connect taking the photos with being able to operate the drone. I'm sure I would get used to it, but it would be pretty rough, I think, in the beginning. So I yeah. take my hat off to you uh, being able to do that successfully and everything. And I know, so there's laws too about drones, right, in certain states. Mm -hmm. so you have to be aware of that as well. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm sure that makes it even, you know, trickier and stuff, but yeah, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. What was one of your you favorite fly. gigs that you've enjoyed or done? Um, so, okay. I feel like every high end, like luxury space that I've been in has been a lot more, like they all have their own appeal to it. Right. Um, yeah. the very first one on my website that was, Blue Homes, that was just like one of the first houses that I got to shoot with my past company. Um, but I would say some of the like individual homes that I've shot, like people's houses, they like Circa Los Angeles was one of them. Um, and then 33 Tama was another one in San Francisco. Mm. They were just like residence homes. And um, just getting to see like the actual unique touch of like a person who lives there. Yeah. So those ones for sure. And then like the views are amazing. I'm sure um, they're amazing. That'd be so fun. Yeah. And then this other one that stood out is like, I would say kind of like the Airbnbs because it's like, I don't know, there's so many different unique little quirks about all of those. Um, and then, God, there was this one in East Sac. It was another woman's home. She was going to Airbnb it. And it was just so cute the way that they designed it. Like the, the architecture and the style in East Sacramento specifically, I feel like, um, is something that I've always just been drawn towards. Like in the Fab 40s, it's just such a cute neighborhood. And like every house has so much character there. That's really cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. And you sound like you've gotten a really great, you know, like different feel for all the different types of styles of housing as well, you know, and locations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, 
it's also cool going from like Sacramento to like San Francisco to Napa to LA and seeing like what's more common in those mm-hmm. areas and where people kind of have like a I would say in like the bigger cities people have a hub of more interior design more like evolution in the way that they'll like decorate the home or the way that they'll build the home and it's just cool to see it like evolve even faster in like more densely populated areas interesting that's a really interesting insight um because i don't think you know a lot of people when they look at it from the outside it's like oh well that house is pretty (laughs) you know like that's the the basics of it you know or in the city it tends to be a little bit more are open to the design side of things and you know out in maybe rural rural area not so much so it Mm -hmm. is kind of you know that's a good insight where um that you can tell the differences of 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 that and the kind of why you know so that's Mm -hmm. really cool um yeah what are some other like for you like what are some gigs that you were surprised about that were kind of like a shock to you that you were aided that you got or that you weren't sure that you're going to be as like it wasn't going to be as interesting and turned out to be really cool um you know there's like a lot of houses that were involved in that that just kind of like they need to go on the market and they need to be sold so Mm -hmm. um like there is a lot of like track homes and a lot of places that are maybe more run down um but at the end of the day, like someone now gets to see that like the house is for sale, they get to see what it looks like inside before maybe they drive an hour away to go see it. Yeah. Um, So I think it's like, I don't know, it's just like, those are the the run of the mill days where you're like, this is just part of the process. Right. But yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And like, what are some things that you would tell your younger self or I mean, you're so young? Um, <laughs> what would you tell yourself getting into this or somebody who's coming up behind you that looks up to you and, you know, wants to get into something that's in the design field or photography, especially with, you know, drones and aerial shots? Um, I would say some of the best advice that I've gotten that I'm actually starting to realize and like implement, I would say first, just fail and fail fast. Just get it out of the way. You're not going to do 100% (laughs) your best work at the beginning. Just get out of the way. Um, And then lately, I'm definitely realizing, like, help others. Like, when you are in service of other people, you realize that your network expands and grows so much more. Um, And, like, people are kind. Like, people want to help you. And when you kind of just approach relationships in that way where it's like, okay, well, I would love to do something for you just to like watch you grow and prosper. Like it, it always eventually comes full circle. So just be a good person, I guess. (laughs) No. Yeah. Yeah, That's a hundred percent true. You know, be a mentor. I was talking, uh, listening to somebody earlier today, they were talking about, you know, being a mentor, and having a mentor, you know, and if you have a mentor or something that's willing to give to you, make sure that you're giving back to them as well, you know, have that full, you know, that full circle that comes along. And I like what you yeah. said, the key is like fail and fail quickly. <laughs> yeah. We're going to fail, it's going to happen, you know, so how are you going to do it? Are you going to do it uh, now or, or later down the road? You know, you can't, you can't get past that. It's might as well learn it and, you know, be willing to ask for help and get through it faster than just you know, yeah kind of. and like especially to that note I think like a lot of people like myself included have this perfectionist idea of like I need it to be perfect I need circumstances to be perfect and I need to be perfect before I can start but at the end of the day like there really is no perfect anything no perfect circumstance there's so, not yeah just yeah there's not there's going so many for people it. that just need to get it out there and just start working on it, you know, and most of us think that it has to be perfect. We have to have the perfect website, this, that, cards, whatever, you know, <laughs> it needs to all be perfect before you can get started. And that just, won't, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you don't know how many times I rebranded at the beginning thinking I'm like, okay, this is the productivity I need to be working on. And it's like, it's not. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, productivity yeah. That won't change. That won't pay the bills. You know, you're, 
what your uh, logo looks like is not going to make people necessarily want to come to you any more than, you know, yeah, that's really good yeah. advice. And like just getting the momentum rolling because like once you're in it, it's like that is like, okay, this is just my life now. Like this is the the movement that I need, but it's like an object at rest stays at rest. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. What would you say your ideal client is? Um, I feel like I have a few in mind and um, I would say ideally someone who takes absolutely like, pride in their work uh, and loves beautiful spaces, I would say as much as I do. So that would tend to be like a luxury real estate agent or a luxury interior designer um, because it can cross between commercial and residential if they're in the interior design space. But yeah, someone who, who operates at that, that luxury high end, mm -hmm. beautiful spaces. <laughs> yeah oh that would be so fun kind of yeah. I know you probably have like a wish list of, of things that you you know want to create or, or something like that to or decorate mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome well I know that um the battery is probably getting low so we'll probably have to jump okay. off here soon but um thanks so much for being with us and where can we find you to work with you um besides your website you have social media and everything correct yeah, so I have revhousemedia.com, and then uh, we have our Instagram at revhousemedia, and then my LinkedIn or the Revhouse Media page on LinkedIn. Those awesome. are the platforms. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> guys, go check her out. Um, she's got some amazing work and does a really fantastic job. So you guys can also find our Malabash. Uh, we have her on there as well. And then definitely check her out at our website. We have it popped up here for you guys to check it out. So um, thank you so much, Elizabeth. And you guys yeah. will all see you next time on Malbash Media Show. Take care. Thank you.